My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me now and we will explore these topics and so much more with fascinating guests, authors, and experts who will guide us to Destination Unlimited. In his 1972 classic album, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust, David Bowie sang a song about Starman. The lyric went in part, There's a Starman waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a Starman waiting in the sky. He told us not to blow it because he knows it's all worthwhile. In 1976, the Canadian band Klaatu released their song, Calling Occupants of Interplanetary Craft, which later was recorded and became a hit for the Carpenters. And in Steven Spielberg's 1982 classic E.T. the Extraterrestrial, E.T. enlists the aid of his human friend Elliot to build a device with which he can phone home. All of these artistic endeavors shared a common theme communication in one direction or another between those on earth with those in the heavens and other planes of existence. What if this communication truly existed? What if we could connect on all levels with all forms of life, energy, and spirit, and share an even deeper connection ultimately with each other? My guest this week on Destination Unlimited, Vincent Jenna, knows these communications well and says that E.T. is trying to phone, but not home, he's trying to phone us. World-renowned Vincent Jenna is a triple-power psychic, an authentic and gifted psychic with the knowledge and experience of a licensed psychotherapist and the big, charming personality of a showman. He combines his early background as a professional actor and singer, a master's in clinical social work, and his hospice experience helping more than 500 patients through the dying process with his uncanny skills as a metaphysician and psychic medium. The sum total of these experiences experience and gifts is a psychic who can guide people not only to recognize what is preventing them from healing or attaining their dreams, but the necessary steps to get there. Vincent is a result-oriented psychic who tunes into an individual on their soul, angelic, and higher self levels of guiding messages. He's then able to decipher where one is blocking themselves from their connection to their higher self or the divine, removes those blockages so one can experience this connection and in the process help the person to heal the corresponding illness, disturbance, or imbalance. He also has the remarkable ability to instill strong self-belief and inspire one to recognize and apply their divine talents to fulfill their dreams and create a happy and rewarding life. Television and radio love Vincent. People have become enamored with his several interviews on Coast to Coast AM and Hay House Radio, as well as a local major radio shows around the country. His appearances on television, such as Hallmark's Home and Family and The Better Show, along with regular appearances on the Chicago and Raleigh morning shows, have captivated the hearts of millions of people. His website is Vincent Jenna dot com that's v i n c e n t g e n n a dot com and he joins me this week to share his story and experience and what our space brothers and sisters want us to know please join me in welcoming to destination unlimited vincent jenna good evening vincent well good evening victor and thank you so much for inviting me here i beamed down specifically just to be able to be on your show tonight well that was a lot of beaming and i really appreciate that vincent (laughs) so Vincent, let's start with your personal story and path were you aware of your ability to connect with spirit as a child or is this something that came later in life Oh, my gosh. I wish I was aware when I was a child, and maybe I wouldn't have been getting slapped in the head so many times. Um, The funny thing is, in in hindsight, this didn't happen to me until I was 28 years old, and it was a specific circumstance that allowed it and caused it to happen. But, Victor, what was really funny is, through my life as a child, 
I always engaged in adult conversations from the moment I was able to speak. And that always earned me a smack in the side of my head, a kick in the butt, get away from the table, get away from the adult. And they would always make comments. He's always got to join in on the conversation. And and my aunts and uncles actually were more compassionate about it. And they were like, well, he's a pretty smart kid. And my uncle used to name me the, the little professor because I had an answer for everything. I had an answer for everything. So it got me in trouble more because even in school, when I would – tell the other kids certain things the way I mean I never knew when to shut my mouth and so at first it got me in trouble in school because the teachers I I went to Catholic school for my first three years out your way Victor I went to St. Stanislaus Mm -hmm. in Maspeth right with which is a big basilica and um, for the so for the first three years, the nuns, oh my gosh, they couldn't stand the idea that I would talk. I would constantly interrupt the class. And even if it was a little chatter, and they would send me home with a note to my mother that she had to sign the note. Vincent was interrupting class again, and that would earn me a beating. And and then in school, the kids started picking on me because I never knew when to shut my mouth. So it always got me in trouble. And, and so it never was a matter of me knowing or seeing angels and, and, or, 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 you know, higher beings coming to me, nothing like that. So, but then at 28, it's when it changed. And so after, I was going to say, after all of these extensive experiences that you had, these terrible childhood experiences, you came to this point that you arrived at the ability to forgive. How did you arrive at this point of grace? Oh, my gosh. I guess it was a matter of grace that was given to me, quite honestly. is The funny thing, Victor, is I never even had to forgive. That, that was the thing. I think it was because I, I almost went along with everybody. I figured if they were picking on me, something was wrong with me. It was me. And I was so desperate Um, for friendship and love that I would never harbor any ill regrets. It's one of the reasons why kids were able to actually manipulate and use me. Even when I thought I had friends, I was a a great little actor and singer and dancer. I had a lot of talent when when I was a kid. That's what actually made me pursue a professional acting career once I became a, a young adult. And I was in a in, in a group, a special group of kids, and you would think that, you know, other drama brats and stuff like that were a little bit more sympathetic with each other because all of the jocks and everybody else, you know, would pick on all of us together some way or another. But I was the one that actually received most of the picking on. And even they would make fun of me, and they would use me, though, and treat me nice because I was the first one to have a car. So it, it, it was never a matter of... Um, me being angry with them or resentful of them, I couldn't afford that. I was willing to accept any type of friendship or any type of kindness that anybody would offer me. And I guess that's why I was usable and I was manipulated and taken advantage of um, uh, because I just needed it. So, So even my parents, I didn't want them to stop loving me, at least what I thought was love. Um, so I certainly wasn't going to get angry with them. I, you know, my brother actually showed more rage and anger towards the both of them because they were very abusive, my parents. And so um, I, on the other hand, was was too desperate for love. And that desperation um, really kept me from having to forgive anybody. A matter of fact, and the way everything changed, I was in the movie Grease. Uh, with John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. I was a singer, actor, and dancer. Um, That, because it went to to such uh, fame at such a rapid pace, right, and speed, a couple of years after the movie was released was my first high school reunion, right? And so here I am, this, this hometown star, even though I didn't have any major part in the movie, but it didn't make a difference. I mean, small town boy from Levittown, you know what Levittown is, is a, a small community in Nassau County, low middle class in, um, um, community and people. And But I was in the movie Grease. 
And so when I went to the reunion, they treated me completely different, like I was a superstar. And and so even then, I I didn't need to forgive them because they treated me exactly the way I wanted to be treated all along. They loved me. Oh, my God. At least they were showing me a kind of love. And one kid, the one jock, the super um, popular guy in the school because he was the class clown and the super uh, football player, he all of a sudden befriended me. He was the original cause of most of my antagonism. He would antagonize the jocks and other kids in the class and school to pick on me. And at this reunion, he actually went in reverse and just gave me this big giant hug. And uh, only a couple of the students actually asked for forgiveness when it wasn't even brought up because of the way I was acting. I was acting as if I had been their friends my entire school career. Um, And so that's the, the direction it went in from there. And it was at that point that instigated all of this paranormal metaphysical stuff in my life, which is really interesting, Victor. And we're going to share that story when we come back from our break. You're talking about your experience channeling Joseph Joseph of Canaan. Is that correct? Oh, my gosh. Yes. You've been doing your research. I've been doing my research. That's what I do. That's what I am. That's what I do. My guest this evening on Destination Unlimited, Vincent Jenna, psychic extraordinaire and contactor or contactee of extraterrestrial life forms, which we'll be talking about later on in the show. And we'll be back with more of Vincent after these words on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you Tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this evening is Vincent Jenna. We're talking about his experiences growing up, becoming aware of his abilities and how those things changed his life and later on communication with extraterrestrials. So, Vincent, at 28 years old, something happened that changed your life. What happened? Oh, my God. Well, besides being married for a few years, because that was a big change right there. Um, Having a kid, he was two and a half years old by then. No, we go back to that 10-year high school reunion and that kid who befriended me who was once my tormentor, right? So he becomes a very close friend over the next couple of years. We had just moved back from California because now I was pursuing a full-time acting career and I wanted to pursue Broadway. I was doing musical theater and some movies back in L.A., And so we come back to California, which allowed me to become even closer with this guy. And um, after spending some time with him and one weekend at his beautiful condo in Connecticut, my wife and I are driving home. We were living in in, uh, on Long Island, renting a home in Levittown when we came back. And I'm in tears. I'm hysterical. And my wife wants to know why. And I'm like, 
I know my friend's life is falling apart. I absolutely know that. Um, Every time he was talking, the entire weekend was about him bragging about his job and the money he's making, his wife, who was a childhood sweetheart, and he had three children with her, and his, his all his friends and his health, how strong he is, and that he's a a, a soccer coach, and, and oh my gosh, it was and a beautiful condo. And all I kept hearing in my head is BS, BS. BS. I'm like, and I'm talking to myself. I said, something's wrong. This is wrong. He's lying to me right now. And something and 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 nobody is helping him. And no matter what question I'd ask him, he wouldn't come out. He wouldn't open up. And so on the way home, I'm telling that to my wife. I'm saying this guy is not opening up. His life is falling apart. He's got nobody to go to. This was the guy who rented the Porsche at our our 10 year reunion just to impress everybody because he didn't want to come in the car that he originally has. And so I knew it. So on the way home, I start crying out to God for the first time. I used to talk with God. I had conversations with myself all the time and with Jesus and with God. But it was more about, you know, telling about the world and complaining about my parents. Never once, Victor, did I ever pray for myself to stop getting abused and tormented, right? So here now I'm 28 years old and I'm crying out to God. I'm begging God, pleading with God, give me the ability to help my friend. I know he's hurting and I don't know how to help him. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Give me the ability to help him. I know what it's like to have your esteem torn away and to be tormented by life rather than happy in life. Please, I want to help him and I want to help other people like him. I have no idea then, I had no idea, why I asked that way. Normally, when you know somebody's in trouble, what do you do? You pray to ask God to help them. Help them. You know, help my friend. His life is falling apart. No, I didn't do that. I said, help me help him. And within a week, Steven Spielberg and Cecil B. DeMille would have been very proud of the epic movie that was created around my life at that moment. It was unfriggin' believable between being introduced to psychic, the psychic realm that I wasn't introduced to before, even while I was out in California. I may have gone to a psychic fair one time with a dime psychic that I sat down and she was 100% wrong about absolutely everything. And, and here I am, I'm being introduced to a new psychic. The new psychic turns around and sees me, says I'm going to be a spiritual teacher, I'm not going to be an actor, all of this, and all of a sudden I start getting... Getting um, all this information pouring into my head. It, I, I start speaking it. I'm telling uh, my wife or it, my friend that was staying over for the weekend, then swirling smoke around me and ghosts that I'm seeing and hearing. And then Joseph, this guy, introduces himself to me as my higher guy, Joseph from Canaan, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coach Joseph. How perfect. I get a musical theater ascended master <laughs> coming into my life. And and there I am, and I'm like, what are we going to sing together? What are you talking about? You're my guide. I, and, and I felt like I was going crazy, but it was a floodgate that opened, and it all occurred. I, obviously, I'm cutting the story really short, but it occurred over a three-month period, and at the end of three months, I'm reading people's past, present, and future. I am speaking words that are written in ancient expert books at the library and the books store. My wife and I went to the bookstore. And at that time, if you remember, the self-help and the spiritual sections were called the occult section. So my wife and I would sneak in the neighborhood Barnes and Noble so nobody would see us in the occult section. We're not nuts, right? And we would pick these books off of the shelves, the teachings of the masters of the Far East and the teachings of this guy and this guy. I can't even pronounce their names because they were all these Tibetan monks that wrote all of these friggin' books, and I'm reading them, um, even Neil Donald Walsh and all of this other stuff, and as I'm reading the book, we're going, oh my God, you said that. Oh my God, this is what you were talking about. Oh my God. So the words that were in these books 
had downloaded into me, and now I'm speaking them. And thank God, Victor, the saving grace of all of this was my wife. My wife and I have been together for 46 years. She has been my own, my first and only girlfriend. I was 17 years old. She was 16 years old. She knew I didn't know any of this nonsense and crap. That's what we thought of it at the time. You know, we thought it was all woo-woo stuff, and she knew that that wasn't in me. We never once had a conversation about that. The, what the most we conversed about is my Catholic background and her Jewish background, and we tried to find the similarities between the both rather than the differences. And then all of this stuff came to me. So we knew then something was happening, and that's how it all started. But I was an obstinate little Italian New Yorker and and stubborn and i had defense mechanisms and i just didn't want to believe i was supposed to let go of my acting and i was supposed to to pursue this spiritual path I, I didn't want anything to do with it and i certainly didn't want to be labeled as this crazy loony woo woo psychic guy who sees dead people now i'm talking to aliens okay <laughs> uh, so <laughs> My wife, my, my wife, my daughter wanted to have a family intervention with me one day. Um, she, the funny thing is that she accepted the fact that I'm psychic. Absolutely. And she accepted the fact that I see dead people. Oh, no problem. The minute I told her I talked with Coco, the sign languaging gorilla, she said, that's it. We have to have an intervention here. <laughs> And I'm like, honey, I talk with dead people. You didn't think that was crazy. Why not just add an animal? I didn't even want to tell her that I talk with aliens now, Victor. So how do you go from being an entertainer and a musical artist to a counselor, social worker, and ultimately a medium? Well, you know, the first part is really easy since so many actors already go to therapy because of their emotional problems, that was an easy transition, okay? I became the therapist instead of going to one. So it actually, think about this for a moment. This is what's so interesting about the beginning part of my life. Here I am drawn into being an actor using emotions, getting in touch with my own emotions, learning how to grasp other humans' emotions and entertain them, make them laugh, make them cry, right, and make them experience. I'm doing the exact same thing now using all of those skills. I know how to open a person's heart and mind. But this time when I do that, I'm not doing it to entertain you. I'm doing it to feed you a message. And my psychic and mediumship skills are what I use to get the message you need to hear to help you unblock your life. So I'm still working with the emotion. So all of it plays together. I've not stepped away from my role at all. And if you ever see me at an event, Victor, which I hope you get a chance to one day, I, I do like a one-man show. I even still sing. So I sing at my events to inspire people in another way and another form. But I feel because the message is so heavy these days, you know, we can't hold anybody by the hand anymore. You know, the, the way I liken it, I, I begin my events by letting them know I'm going to be hard. And I tell them why. I say, listen, you and I are walking down the streets of Manhattan. I want you to picture this. We're walking down the streets of Manhattan on the sidewalk. I look up and I see the piano that's being moved from the 34th floor to the 40th floor, floor breaks loose and is falling right to your head. Now. I have one of three choices to respond, right? My first choice is I run the hell across the street and out of the way and say, man, that's your karma sucker, not mine. Okay, that's choice one. Choice two, I can be like some of the other metaphysicians around and go, excuse me, I really don't have the right to interfere in your life. But I just wanted to let you know, splat, by the time I'm done trying to help you, you're already gone. The piano's landed on your head. Or choice three, I grab you by the damn shoulders and I throw you out of the way. And in the process of that, you know what? You may land on the ground. You may break a wrist. You may sprain your ankle. But I've saved your life and your soul. How would you like me to treat you right now with the piano falling towards your head? Mm -hmm. 
and everybody says the exact same thing. I want you to grab me by the shoulders and throw me out of the way. And I say, well, then let's get to work. I was the only hospice social worker in my area here in Raleigh, North Carolina, believe it or not, Victor, that told their patients they were going to die. Not even the doctors here would tell their own patients they were dying, and that was the reason why they were put on hospice. They were so cowardly, they were so hidden and and thought that they were protecting the person, and I was always, that person has the right to know he or she is dying. You can't hide it from them, and I bet you they know before you know. And sure enough, I always got a thank you from every, I, I helped to transition 500 patients And almost every single one of them said thank you to me for how honest I was with them. That's the type of worker I am, and that's the type of work we need today. So I use my entertaining ability, make people laugh, you know, and then I feed them that that magic bullet, that message, you know. We're gonna it's tough. pick up we're gonna pick up more on that, especially about the hospice work in the next segment. My guest is Vincent Jenna. We're talking about everything he does, psychic, entertainment wise, and also communicating with extraterrestrials, which we'll touch upon in the next half of the show. Vincent, please tell our listeners where they can find out more about you, your work, and also I understand you have some wonderful events coming up this fall and winter. Oh, my gosh, yes. Thank you so much for asking. Um, they can go to my website. is going to be the best place to go to, which is vincentjenna.com, and that's V-I-N-C-E-N-T-G-E-N-N-A.com. I have all my media interviews and radio shows and television shows on there. They can see me in action, see me working with spirits and ghosts, everything, even see me working with animals. And so that's going to be the best way of communicating with me. You can book a reading with me personally through there. Um, Also, I have an event page, and I'm really excited about all the events that I've been doing this year and still what's coming up. In September, September 12th to the 15th, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona with some of the best luminaries, um, John Holland, Suzanne Giesman, um, uh, Howard Martin. Also, um, up in in December, um, uh, I will be at the Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health, which is is in um, Stockbridge, Massachusetts, three-day intensive workshop. Stop stopping yourself and become unstoppable. And then what's great, we're going to have a blast on a spiritual cruise that uh, science of mind and unity philosophies are coming together. And we're cruising the first week of January to the Caribbean. We'll be back with more of Vincent Jenna after these words on the Ohm Times Radio Network. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this week is Vincent Jenna, psychic, gifted man in so many ways and in so much of the work that he does and the way he helps people. Um, You had mentioned before the break a class that you have called Stop Stopping Yourself. Please tell us about this concept. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, here's the thing that people don't understand. Only 2 to 5% of the human mind is in conscious awareness. That means, Victor, that 95 to 98% of the rest of the mind is in unconscious awareness. So you have no idea what's going on in the majority of your mind. And some of the research that I've done while I was going to school to get my BA in psychology and my master's in clinical social work, 
all of this experience helped me to realize that the mind is divided in more ways than just three sections, a conscious mind, subconscious mind, unconscious or superconscious mind, as Carl Jung labeled it. It's divided further into the defense mechanism mind. I call it the adult defense mechanism mind and the environmental made mind, which is actually the earliest mind that is created by us, by the brain in our youth. And it harbors our first set of maladaptive self-beliefs and beliefs about the universe based on the negative messages that we're receiving from the environment or our parents and the adults around us. And I call them the I'm not. So the first set of beliefs we form about ourselves are I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not lovable enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not tall enough. Whatever the I'm not is, that's we develop because of those negative messages we're receiving. Now, as our mind continues to develop and we're young adults now. There is a new mind that takes over that I call the adult made mind and we're the ones that create it and the brain, the two is functions of the brain is one to keep us alive and two to protect us. Well, it protects us physically. We know how that happens. It'll raise our body temperature when we have a virus or a bacteria. So it makes the body an unlivable environment for the bacteria. When we're lacking oxygen, it makes us pass out so that we lay flat on the ground. We're laying flat on the ground. We can take in more oxygen. Well, that's what it does to help us with physical issues. That's how it protects us. How does it protect us with emotional issues and pain? Well, it creates defense mechanisms. Freud labeled 10 of them, including denial, repression, suppression, projection, intellectualization, rationalization, and the other ones. But it also creates a new set of beliefs for us about ourselves and about the world that shield us and protect us from our original ones. So instead of believing I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, we can now believe, wait, it's not my fault. It's his fault. It's her fault. It's my partner. It's my boss. It's it's the, the politics. It's the economy. And so that winds up blocking what's really going on. Now, why is that all important? You know, you can go to a therapist and maybe learn how to cope more with life and what you believe in. But because we're spiritual beings, you've got to remember that all you do is take your inner core beliefs and plug them into the wall. We manifest not from our conscious beliefs, but our inner core deep down beliefs, those first set of maladaptive beliefs that are hiding the soul's mind and the truth about who we are and our magnificence and divinity. So we're manifesting from those I'm nots. And we don't even know it because the defense mechanisms are shielding that. So the result is... We don't believe what we think we believe. So when a person comes to me, Victor, and says, you know, I don't understand why I can't find a, you know, a good person, a good woman, a good man. I keep, you know, finding these these bad people, these idiots, uh, these jerks, you know, um, when am I going to find somebody? And I, and I would turn around and I say, well, as soon as you believe you're lovable. Oh, I know I'm lovable. I know I'm this and I've done all of this work. And no, 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 no. I know that I am. It's just where I live. There's nothing but jerks. And I'm always telling them there are 8 billion people on the face of the earth. You come across about 100 of them a week. And you're telling me out of those group of people you keep coming across, Across all new ones that not one of them is good enough for you no you are avoiding them like wearing cloves of garlic around your neck trying to avoid vampires you don't know you're doing that but your unconscious mind the little kid inside of you that feels unlovable i'm not lovable i'm not good enough is actually influencing the manifesting energy so you may not know that obviously which is why you keep manifesting and creating Creating things in your life that you don't want 
rather than what you do want. Now you've got this new consciousness, right? Because of shows like yours and books and authors. And we've all shifted, or at least the majority of people on the planet are shifting into this new understanding that we're greater than just being physical beings. And so we have all this information that's been made aware of us, and it's come out of the spiritual closet, shall we say. We have these new thought movements, science of mind and unity centers, right, teaching all of this stuff. But people still can't make it work. And actually, that's my new book. It's called God, It's Not Working, One Man's Journey Back to Belief. And it's all about we don't believe what we think we believe. And until we bring to the surface what we're really believing in order to change that inner core belief, you will never manifest what you want to manifest. Because if you don't have, and this is for all your listeners right now, and here's the judge of that and the proof of what I'm saying. Because we are unlimited beings, because we were created in the image of this divine force, we're capable of creating and manifesting all we want. We're co-creators. That's an understanding. The law of attraction is a new understanding for most people. If you are not manifesting all you want, if you don't have the love of your life by your side right now, it's because your inner core belief and inner child does not believe you're lovable. If you don't have the finances you want right now, it's because you probably believe you don't deserve finances. If you have poor health, it's probably because you believe you're unworthy and that you deserve to be punished in some way. If you don't have a, the right job, it's because you don't believe you're good enough. And I can go on and on and on with what you don't have to prove what you're really believing. But people don't know they're believing that until we work on it. When I work with a person, it's easier for me to bring to the surface because the psychic in me can see it. And then I can actually point out events in their lives where they lost their self-belief. And then they go, oh, you know, you're right. But until they hear it, they're being protected from that by their own defenses. And that's what's stopping them. We will stop ourselves. We sabotage ourselves because we don't believe in ourselves. That's the bottom line, Victor. That's a wonderful concept. And thank you for sharing that. One of the aspects of your career that deeply resonates with me is your hospice work. How did this start for you? And what do you bring to those that you lovingly assist Wow, what I did. Um, well, because I was a psychic medium and I was doing that for 37 years, in between it, I was basically guided to go back to school to get my psychotherapy degree so I would gain a little bit more credibility. And like I said originally, even when this happened to me, I still didn't want to be a psychic because I didn't want to be thought of as one of those crazy loons. So I, I got my degrees to have credibility and to combine it with my psychic ability, all right? So in the process of doing that, I originally had my own practice and it was going really well, but I wanted something a little bit more stable and secure. And a friend of mine was working for Duke Hospice, and uh, which is one of the largest hospice here in North Carolina. And there was an opening for a social worker and she just suggested it to me. She said, I think you would do really great, especially as a medium and a psychic dealing with these people with the dying. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't work with the dying. But sure enough, I did. And, I'm, and I was definitely guided in that direction because, Victor, when you work with the dying, you then know what you need to do for the living. And and it helped me so much in learning. Um, uh, first of all, the simplest thing I will tell everybody right now, you will die the way you live. Bottom line it. I'm here in the Bible Belt, North Carolina, and let me tell you, people's faith went right out the window the moment that they were told that they had a terminal illness. They no longer believed in God, or they were totally angry, or they thought they were all going to hell. And not one of them thought that they were going to be going to heaven. Not one of them thought that, that there was a God. All this anger came out. They lost their faith. And when you have something that's real, you don't lose it that quickly. That was another thing that I found out. The other thing is, is every time I would listen to somebody and we were able to open the doors real quick because of my psychic ability, you know, I would be sitting there and I knew right away what had happened in this person's life that even led him to the dying that he's doing right now or she's going through. When you're on hospice, you're not obviously dying of a quick, you know, um, um, heart 
a heart attack in the middle of the night or out in the field, you have a longer lingering cancer and disease um, and lung problem, a blood problem, whatever it is. And so there's there's all of that suffering that goes on with it. And so I had the opportunity of being able to spend time with my patients and go there with them um, and go into their past. And I saw so much of what they were going through, which allowed me to understand even further that we manifest, we absolutely even manifest our own illnesses and that the way we live our lives, if we live them negatively, if we live them in fear, if we live them with angers and hatreds and hurt and pain, that's unresolved, we're going to die that way because we manifest that in our bodies. It just, our bodies are the result, our physical lives. And Edgar Casey said this, spirit is life, mind is the builder, physical is the result. And what he meant by that is whatever you truly spiritually believe deep down in your core affects the way you think. The way you think then creates the outcome of your life. And so, All these people had such negative thinking and negative fears and doubts and angers and resentments. And of course, they were dying of all these horrible cancers. So now I use that to help the living. Okay, because not only can I tell where their body is going, I can reverse it and tell where they are emotionally based on the physical things they're going through. But more importantly, how do we even avoid those things? And so um, it's it just I, I, I was just guided there, Victor, to help me even that much further. I have so many different tools to be able to use for the living, um, including communicating with animals and now communicating with aliens. Believe it or not, alien communication with me is strictly for the help of all the people on the planet today. And we're going to pick up on that in the next segment. My guest is Vincent Jenna. We'll be back with more Vincent after these words on the Ohm Times Radio Network. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, It's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad, just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Change and growth are part of natural life, and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Back on Destination Unlimited, my guest this week is the amazing and mellifluous Vincent Jenna, and we've been talking about all things that he does, psychic and spiritual and and hospice work and counseling people and getting them to stop stopping themselves, and now we're going to talk about what brought him to my attention to begin with. I opened our interview discussing communication on all levels, realms, and frequencies, 
What brought Vincent to my attention was his work with aliens. Vincent, when did this contact start? Wow. Actually, more recently, I've been doing this work now for 37 years. It's only been in the last two years with the in the advent of me becoming more worldwide known and being on TV and doing radio shows and like your own. Um, and even with the possibility, well, I'm working on having my own television show right now, actually. It, <clears throat> that's when it came to me and that's when it happened. And I wasn't expecting it. It was very similar to all of a sudden I started hearing animals and I just incorporated that in my work. That one day, um, I'm just doing some of my meditation, and I'm just sitting there doing some work. I go online. I make my newsletter and stuff like that, right? And within my head, I start hearing a communication, something similar to we need to talk with you. And usually, that's how some of my guides, the angels, maybe some deceased loved ones um, start communicating with me. And I'm like, Okay, I honor, I always honor my inner voice, whatever comes to me, especially when it's out of the blue. And they turn around and they say, no, we're not one of any of your guides. We're an alien council, an extraterrestrial council. And I said, okay, are we talking about Star Trek now Um, and the intergalactic council? And they said, yeah, basically like that. And I went, wow, what what are you a council of? And they said, well, we are beings from all the different universes. And there's a group of us that help to guide all of where the spirits and souls are going and what they're doing. I said, even Earth? It's just like, yes, absolutely, even Earth. I said, so what is the purpose of this communication and why have you waited so long? Said, well... In the next couple of years, it's going to be coming more apparent that alien ex- uh, uh, sightings are more acceptable now. And we're coming back and doing more visitations. And we need to set things straight. And because of your voice and your strength and your popularity, we want to give you the correct information to share with the human race. So to let go of some of the most ridiculous things that they are being told and the purpose of who we are and why we've been visiting your earth to start with. I'm going to, I'm going to That's stop you. That's how it started. I'm going to stop you for one second. And I, I already know the answer to this question, but I would, I'm asking this uh, devil's advocate for our listeners tonight. How were you able to discern that this communication was extraterrestrial rather than from the spirit realm? Because they told me. Okay. And and here's the, and it was as simple as that, Victor. I have always I have established a relationship with the spiritual realm, okay, with the other dimensions, with the angels, with God, with Jesus, with Joseph. I mean, I'm talking to these these higher ups or at least what religious leaders would call the higher ups. I don't. They're my brothers and sisters and dad. And 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 that that's simple, right? And they have always guided me, protected me, and I never, never had an evil experience, a demonic experience, somebody trying to manipulate my mind. Everybody tries to warn me of that. I'm like, well, since you believe it's going to happen to you, then I would give much more attention to you than to me because I know it's not going to happen to me. And so when it does come to me, I believe it. That was part one. But part two is what they explained to me made all the sense in the world. And then recently, just this, uh, the end of, I would say the end of last year, actually August of last year, I was introduced to a gentleman that validated everything I heard and everything I was believing. So it first came to me. I chose to believe it. The information and communication became stronger. And then I was brought to somebody who is living, who is associated and affiliated now and working with NASA, the FBI, the CIA and the Vatican, who has confirmed everything I said and now wants to work with me hand in hand in the work that he's doing. What were some of the messages that the aliens gave you? 
Okay, the most important one is we're not down there harming you and sucking the brains out of your head. Okay, um, that's the most important thing. There is no such thing as reptilians. None of our species decided to stay on Earth and procreate with your alligators and lizards. Okay. <laughs> Because that's exactly what they believe reptilians are. That greys, grey is a, a species of aliens, right? They're the small guys with the big heads and the big eyes and the small mouths, okay? They actually believe there is a sect of, of paranormal people that believe that there are greys living under the water and they procreated with um, lizards, any of them, alligators, anything, and now they're around the earth and they're harming us and they're going to suck our brains out and control us and eat us. And I'm like, yes, I can just see an advanced species like these greys wanting to have procreation, uh, intimate relationships with a lizard. It just goes to show you if you have beliefs like that, no wonder why your life is screwed up and you're so freaking backwards. Okay. It's just like, give me a break. That's what they wanted to correct. That was the most important thing and that we've been helping you since the beginning of your existence. A matter of fact, they have also helped to make us. Mm. Yes. We are genetically engineered by them. We are actually modern man is. Greg Braden. And other um, experts have done scientific research that shows over 11,000 years ago, the original human DNA strand was spliced. It was literally sliced at a certain level, part removed, and a new part infused that instantaneously and spontaneously created modern man. Proof, if you go to Ancestry.com or 23andMe and you have your DNA testing done, which is a fad now that everybody is doing, they will even tell you if you have any of that DNA from the Neanderthals. They have modern man and Neanderthals completely separated. You know, it's interesting because I had that done and I came up 50% Eastern European, 25% Irish, and 25% alien. It's just fascinating the way that all works. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Victor. Are you talking about the alien that they're trying to um, send back to your country or alien from another planet? From another world, not, not the other That's good. You know aliens. what? Good for you. Um, and so what they did is they tried to hasten our advancement. We were advancing very slowly. Um, they came down to give us all the help. We know that. It, they were so accepted back then. The Peruvians revere them. The Egyptians knew right away. The ancient cultures painted them on caves. They were here to help. There was no fear. There was no threat. There was none of that. They didn't come down as giant spiders either with 20 heads on them and thousands of teeth none of that crap and so they helped we accepted it then they started hiding themselves because this alien council said hey guys listen listen you all had your chance to evolve in your universe you know and it's wonderful that you want to help your brothers and sisters but you're you're eliminating their ability to grow and evolve on their own through their own mistakes and their own learning an analogy to that is um, an older brother and a younger sister, they're sitting in the kitchen, they're doing their homework, right? The older brother leans over and looks at the younger sister doing a math homework and turns around and says, the answer to number 10 is seven. And now mom is standing in the room and she goes, Joey, you know, or Victor, say it's you. Victor, leave your little sister to do her math homework herself. She's got to learn by herself. I know you want to help her, but she's got to learn by herself, okay? And so, yeah, all right, mom. And so you stop helping your sister until mom leaves the room. Then you're sneaking over and you go, the answer to number 15 is two, you know? That's what they're doing and why they're sneaking here now because they can't stand watching us hurt ourselves. So now – I'm sorry. I just, I just want to get this one point Go ahead. out. Go ahead. 
the, the reason why they're coming down even now is because we created such a diseases and anomalies and mutations that they're re-splicing our DNA to help us deal with these so that we don't ruin the human seed. Which leads to my final question. I remember that famous scene, I'm sure you do, at the end of 2001 A Space Odyssey, in which Keir DeLay's transformed character says, something is going to happen Something wonderful. Is something wonderful going to happen? Oh, God, Victor, do you know the jury is out on that? They're trying and we're trying, but we need more of a critical mass of people waking up because right now we're destroying everything. We're hurting the planet. I am not going to sit here and be one of those woo-woo people in the metaphysical and spiritual realm that say everything is perfect the way it is and all we have to do is om. No, it's not perfect. We're hurting ourselves. We're hurting each other. We're hurting the planet. And other universes are trying to help. Our spiritual awakening, people like yourself are trying to help. We need to get our act together. Is there hope? Absolutely. Can it be wonderful? Absolutely. Is it a definite? Absolutely not. That's what free will is all about. The end game, though... No soul will be destroyed. When the God force created us, it created the beginning and it created the end. It left the middle to us. That's it. We can ruin the middle. Absolutely. I think that in my personal opinion, I'm on the hopeful side that the majority of folks will wake up and something wonderful will happen, but it's going to require each and every one of us to participate. My guest this week, Vincent Jenna. Vincent, thank you so much for joining us. Very quickly, one more time, please tell our listeners how they can find out. Excuse me. Please tell us one more time how they can find out more about you and this amazing work. All you have to do is go to my website at vincentjenna.com, that's G-E-N-N-A, or my Facebook page, which is Vincent Jenna MSW. Communicate with me, sign on and get my newsletter. I don't inundate anybody with a lot of news, and you can write me, have a reading with me, and learn all about the work that I do. Listen to my radio show, my Unity Radio Show, which is on every Wednesday at noon Eastern Time on UnityOnlineRadio.com. Org. Vincent, thank you so much. We have so much more to talk about. You're going to definitely have to come back and join me again. I would love to, Victor. You're unbelievable. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you all the listeners for joining us. And that's right. Thank you, listeners, for joining us this week on Destination Unlimited. I'm Victor, the voice Furman. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>